The hero of this story is an unlikely one, and we'll get to the plant soon. But first, I would like to introduce you to a species which is slippery, scaly and cold-blooded, and heartwarmingly endearing. Meet the Australian lungfish. They can live to be a hundred years old and thanks to a quirk of evolution have a functional lung and can breathe above water occasionally. Lungfish should be superstars. They should be on our coat of arms because they have some major claims to fame. They are the world's oldest living vertebrate. They were here in Australia before the dinosaurs. 380 million years ago, and they can grow to be huge. A mature adult can weigh 45 kilos and measure one and a half meters long. This spot on the Brisbane River is lungfish habitat. I'm meeting with a fisheries scientist who's been studying this prehistoric marvel for over a decade. So David, something tells me I'm not alone in admiring this wonderful creature. Yeah, you're right, Jerry. They're an amazing fish. We're so lucky to have them in Australia. So this has a lung and it has paddles. Why is it equipped to have those when it lives in water? We're not really sure. Evolution can be a pretty confusing thing, but definitely it would have helped them survive harsh water quality conditions. So when oxygen levels were a lot lower, they could breathe air. And their limbs are a unique evolutionary trait that doesn't exist in many different animals. They're called lobed fin fishes, so instead of having rays like a normal fish, they actually have bones and muscle like a limb. There were about 10 species of lungfish in Australia about 15 million years ago, but now there's only one. And not only did they used to occur right across Australia, now they only occur essentially in three rivers in southeast Queensland, the Mary, the Burnett and the Brisbane River. Check for a tag. They may live to an old age, but David's research has been showing that it's an ageing population and very few young are surviving. Like most living things, lungfish depend on plants for their survival. So David, what makes this spot perfect lungfish habitat? It's all about these submerged aquatic plants that we can see in the river here. This is Valisneria or eelgrass, and that is the preferred breeding habitat for lungfish. Essentially, they will lay their eggs in amongst those strands where they're protected from the flow, and they'll sit there for a good month and, and incubate until they hatch. So this is a nursery area we're standing in. It sure is, yeah. So their eggs need something to attach to, yeah, that's right. That's the key thing for the eggs to survive well, is to have nice oxygenated water and some protection from things that might like to eat them amongst those leaves. Without eelgrass in the rivers, the chances of survival of eggs is so slim, and when there's no eelgrass, we don't see juvenile lungfish. We think that what happens is basically there's just one or two lucky survivors within this eelgrass that survive through to adulthood, and that's enough to keep the population going. And if we lose this eelgrass, those one or two key survivors may not get through and we'll start to see numbers decline. While this section of the river is looking healthy, in other areas, the necessary eelgrass is getting harder and harder to find. The Brisbane River is subject to large natural flood events which tear out the grass and scour the river of vegetation. Normally, the population would gradually recover as seeds and bits of grass get carried back in creeks and waterways. But the river is now dammed upstream, so the natural revegetation is taking a lot longer. In an attempt to boost the dwindling eelgrass population, David and his team began an aquatic regeneration project. They've been working in tandem with Mark, who's been managing revegetation projects for decades. An aquatic reveg project must be very different to one on the land. Oh, it's totally different. Yeah, I haven't done anything like this before. So I've done a million, you know, revegetation projects on, on the land, um, but having to troubleshoot how we get these plants into the bed of the river and look after them. You know, it's, it was, it's, it's quite a challenge. On the plus side, I've got to say here in Queensland, uh, we don't have to water the things after we plant. <laughs> so that's a big deal, yeah. What are the steps to produce what is essentially like turf? 
What we do, we get these squares of jute mat. So it's, it's a, a natural fibre, you know, like you'd find in a, in a hanging basket. And we get the crowns from existing plants and we plant them into this jute. And we get a bit of sand in there in the mix to, so it's got some, some stuff to root into. Something we could sort of get hold of and, and put in the riverbed and, you know, secure in there. Imagine trying to put these little runners individually into the running water. To see how these are planted, I think we'll first have to get a bit wet. All right, so what we're going to do, Jerry, is we're just going to scrape a bit of a hole in the riverbed here. So I'm just going to shift a bit of that rocks and sand out of the way. Get a little bit of a hole. Make sure those roots have got nice contact with the, the sand and the soil underneath there. So we use these little pegs to uh, help pin this mat down so that it doesn't get ripped away by the river current. They're made out of cornstarch. They'll break down over a couple of years. And there we go. What we do like to do is put maybe just, just one or two bigger rocks on there. Really weighing it down. Really weighing it down. We don't want it to go anywhere. We need those roots right in there, doing their thing. As they grow and reproduce, those runners will they'll break off and they'll drift downstream. So they recolonize these bits of the river that, that haven't got this grass in it anymore. So far, so good. The plants are going really well. So we planted some tiles, Jerry, in part of the river and we noticed that a lot of the plants were getting eaten overnight and what we discovered was large adult lungfish were coming in and grazing on our freshly planted grass. So they use Valisneria for pretty much everything. And it makes sense because within the Valisneria is also a whole ecosystem of food of snails and shrimps and clams and that's really what the adults like to eat. Fantastic. I'm looking at this plant from totally different eyes now as a result of what you've been saying. Without the eelgrass there would be no lungfish. Yeah, that's right. It's very, very special that we're custodians of this unique fish in South East Queensland. When I was nine years old, I saw a captive Australian lungfish in a museum in London. And I desperately wanted one I could call my own. Who would believe that many decades later, I'd be on the other side of the planet, right next to their wild habitat, and investigating a conservation program to keep this primitive and ancient creature alive. 